Hello Overclockers, my name is Brownie and welcome to the latest episode of News Weekly. This 63rd instalment is actually our last with our current videographer Simon. You've never seen him but you might have heard him and you've definitely seen his smooth editing and beautiful b-roll. But alas, he has finally had enough of me. So goodbye Simon and hello to this week's stories, which include this week's free game, some awesome product launches and news about the Epic Game Store plus much more. So let's get into it. As always, let's kick off the episode with the gaming chapter and this week's free game is awesome. Over on the Epic Game Store, you can get PC Building Simulator completely free. This simulation game allows you to design and build your own system with real world licensed components from some of the industry's biggest manufacturers. You'll be pleased to know there are no hardware shortages and there is all the cases, components and hardware that you can dream up from manufacturers such as Asus, Be Quiet, Cooler Master, Gigabyte, MSI, Team Group and many, many more. You can plan and build your own custom loop practice overclocking and even see how it benchmarks, all without the risk of leaky fittings, bent pins and exploding power supplies. For a bigger challenge, the career mode in PC Building Simulator puts you in charge of your very own PC building and repair business. And with the official Overclockers UK DLC, you can feel like you're really part of the Overclockers team. If you're a PC building noob, you can learn how to assemble everything with step-by-step -step instructions and learn more about each individual component. So not only is it a fun, chill game, but a useful tool for PC enthusiasts and novices. PC Building Simulator normally retails for $14.99, so it's well worth grabbing for free. And there's loads of different DLC to collect, which expands the gameplay even further. Make sure to get it on the Epic Game Store before the 14th of October. The next gaming story this week is all about the upcoming 2021 Game Awards. This annual event was founded in 2014 by Jeff Keighley, and it's gone from strength to strength ever since. Last year, the online-only event attracted an incredible 83 million viewers, and this year it's back on over 40 different streaming platforms, some in glorious 4K, and as an invite-only event in person. The event will be held at the Microsoft Theatre in Los Angeles, and I think that it's actually going to be really great to see and hear some form of crowd, just to get that excited atmosphere, even if you're going to be tuning in remotely. The date is set for the 9th of December and there's no time announced just yet but I'm going to expect it to start pretty late in the evening as they're going to be running on US time. If previous years are anything to go by, there will be a jam-packed schedule filled with talks from developers, the latest trailers of brand new games, exciting announcements and of course some awards too. In the run-up to the event, look out for the announcement of 2021's nominees sometime in mid-November. It's likely big titles like Deathloop, Far Cry 6 and Resident Evil Village will be on the list. Additionally, you'll be able to take part in the Game Awards Festival. There will be limited time demos of select upcoming games to download and try so you can play what's newly released and what's up and coming in the world of games. Make sure to add this event to your calendar and keep an eye out on the Game Awards socials for announcements of the schedule and official nominees. To end the gaming chapter of the news, it's another story from Epic Games. The platform has grown in popularity thanks to its endless generosity with free titles, and now, next week, the store is finally getting a long-awaited feature, Epic Achievements. At first, the opportunity to earn achievements will only be available on a select few games. This includes Rocket League, Hades, Pillars of Eternity, Kena, Zombie Army 4 and Alan Wake Remastered, with Epic working to get tools to more developers so you can expect to see Epic achievements popping up in your favourite games later in the year. Achievements will be broken up into four levels, so you've got Bronze, Silver, Gold and Platinum, which will all award different levels of XP to your user profile. 
These EPIC achievements are different from the current achievement system that EPIC offers, which will be renamed to Developer Achievements. If you've managed to earn any, they're going to be converted into EPIC Achievement XP if a developer decides to add the new system to their game. The new system is designed to span all of the different titles in your library, so you can gain experience on a platform-wide level and flex your newfound XP to your friends. At the moment, there's no reward for completing the tiers of challenges. However, Epic says that it's gonna add new social features and player rewards later this year. So there's something to look forward to. As you can tell, our first hardware story this week is the announcement of a brand new noble chair, and it's the officially licensed Far Cry 6 noble chair, which has been released to celebrate the launch of the game on the 6th of October. The unique and eye-catching design has been embroidered into the classic noble chair's hero model. This is the largest in the range, and it comes with inbuilt lumbar support, which is adjustable for great comfort. And I am actually sat on one right now, which I use at my desk in the Oberhocker's office, and yep, I can confirm, it is comfy. The Far Cry inspired design gives a nod to Danny Rojas and the character's love for the Las Gorillas baseball team. The back of the chair is embroidered with a baseball uniform inspired design with D Rojas and the number six. Inside the seating area is an oversized Las Gorillas gorilla artwork with striking yellow eyes. In fact, the whole chair is accented with a black and solar yellow theme and then finished with a Far Cry 6 logo on the headrest. The Far Cry 6 Special Edition Noble Chair allows you to fight out with the ruthless dictator Anton Castillo in style and comfort and it's available to pre-order now for $389.99. We'll drop a link in the description below. Our next story is a brand new launch from PC hardware manufacturer Corsair. The company has been around for as long as I can remember being interested in PC hardware, and it all started with memory and power supplies before the company made its mission to make literally everything RGB. I must admit, I'm a bit of a Corsair fangirl. At home, my keyboard, memory, cooler, and fans perfectly sync up to create a light show that would give 8-pack nightmares because I have my hatred for RGB. You can have nearly an all Corsair setup, and unfortunately their new product isn't that giant RGB fan, but they have launched their first gaming monitor called the Xenion, or its full name, the Xenion 32 QHD 165S, because of course it wouldn't be a monitor without a string of letters and numbers. Looking at the spec list, it's clear to see that Corsair knows what gamers want, and this 32-inch IPS display comes with a 1440p resolution, smooth 165Hz refresh rate, fast 1 millisecond response time, and G-Sync and FreeSync support. It's a very nice combination that nails the sweet spot for most gamers, and the 98% coverage of the DCI-E P3 color space even makes it suitable for creatives. Other features include IQ software integration and a fancy die-cast aluminum stand with integrated cable management, good adjustability, and compatibility with the Elgato rigging system for your camera and lights if you're a streamer. Overall, it's a great first display from Corsair, and I reckon that we're going to see a widescreen and a 4K option in the near future. However, I think what lets it down is the £799 price tag, which seems steep when you compare it with other similar gaming displays. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Our next story is about Case Labs, and if you're a dedicated PC enthusiast with expensive taste, I'm sure you will remember this high-end case manufacturer. Unfortunately, the company filed for bankruptcy and closed back in 2018, taking all of its wonderful designs with it. However, thanks to some investigation by the team over at Gamers Nexus, isn't Steve's hair glorious? We now know that the Case Labs brand is being brought back to life after being acquired by a new owner. In a statement to the Gamers Nexus team, the new owner said, The immediate plan is to bring the original lineup back into production, which will not be an easy task. The parts will be in a flat, unfolded state, and there's no instructions for how to fold the parts, so me and my manufacturers will have to work out how to fold each individual part. 
The most important thing to me is that the spirit of Case Labs is maintained, no matter what new products I release. I want to keep the same level of quality and craftsmanship and where possible modularity as before Case Labs went bankrupt. I'm a firm believer in the right to repair and keeping it simple for the end user. Existing and future products from Case Labs shall reflect that. It all sounds very promising and hopefully we'll hear more from Case Labs once they figure out the designs and begin to manufacture the sought after PC cases once again. In the past, one of Overclocker's stunning 8-pack systems was actually even designed and built in a Case Labs case, and it will be awesome to see a new version of that incredible build in the near future. Let me know in the comments below if you're looking forward to seeing Case Labs back on the market. The final hardware story this week is that Asus has partnered up with Noctua to create a special edition RTX 3070 graphics card. It seems that fan-made render was actually based on some sort of truth, and now you can create the brown and beige PC of your dreams. The cooler looks similar to the Asus Dual Card, but with a coating of Noctua's signature colour scheme. I reckon it could actually look quite smart in the right case. It's not all about its unique chocolate looks either. The sizable heatsink and two NFA12X25 fans provide a 10 decibel lower sound level, making it quieter than your average GPU with decent airflow to keep everything cool. There's no information on pricing or availability just yet, but it's due to launch as a regular edition and OC overclocked edition at the end of the month. Of course, Overclockers UK will do our best to get our hands on stock so you can get your hands on the interesting design. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Overclockers News Weekly. There's been loads of product launches this week, so let me know what was your favourite in the comments below. Also, make sure to like, hit the subscribe button, and also press the bell icon so you don't miss our upcoming episodes. And I'll see you again next Friday.